Collisions with excess stock left on the part in Z-level roughing toolpaths are now automatically avoided during the toolpath calculation when using holder collision clipping. Previously, only the model was checked against, which whilst ensuring a collision-free toolpath against the part, did not take into account remaining stock after each Z-level. Now the stock is dynamically updated during toolpath calculation, helping to avoid collisions with unmachined stock material. In this example, we've got a mould component and we've got two features here already pre-created uh, that represent the two different toolpath calculations. Both of these are Z-level vortex toolpaths. Uh, the first toolpath is actually an imported uh, toolpath that we're using as a toolpath feature just to represent how we calculated this toolpath in 2015 R3. The second toolpath is a Z-level toolpath uh, that uh, uses this new calculation algorithm for 2016. So I'm going to turn off the second toolpath just for the time being and just have a look at how the uh, previous behaviour worked uh, inside FeatureCam. So this first toolpath, if I play a centerline simulation, we can see we get the various slices of our vortex toolpath working down through our component. If I rotate around, just to get a view somewhere here, you should be able to see that we've got these passes here, so tool is quite close to the part. Then as it adjusts for the holder collision clipping, the tool moves away from the component uh, to avoid a collision with the part. If we were to uh, view this as a 3D simulation, so I'm just going to go to my simulation settings. I'm going to turn off the holder just for the time being. Uh, just make sure my pause on gauge is on. And then just do a 3D simulation. So here we can see the various slices working our way down through the component. And that gives us our basic roughing toolpath. However, if we were to display the, uh, the holder in this case, so I'm just going to say show holder and then replay that simulation. You can see quite early on I'm getting a collision. So it's indicating I've either got a gouge or tool has rapided into material. If I continue to play this, you can see we continue to get gouges. I'm just going to turn this off and just have a look at the uh, stock condition once we've worked our way down to the part. So we can see the magenta uh, gouge there. We can also see it further down uh, and also further uh, as we get further and further down to the component. So clearly we're getting the holder uh, is colliding, but the holder is not colliding with the part. We've already uh, collision checked that. So what's actually happening is it is colliding with the remaining stock. And this is purely because of each of the Z slices and the depth of the slices. We're not taking into account the, uh, the thickness of the, uh, uh, of the stock material. Now if I, uh, if I just turn on the uh, remaining stock, so this is a, a, an STL file I've got on a separate level uh, and this gives me the, the true impression of what I believe this toolpath uh, should have produced uh, and it's quite evident that if I do a, a, a centerline simulation, I'm just going to do uh, based on the, uh, the rapids, so I'm just going to move to position, let's go to the next one, let's work our way down to this next slice. Just zoom in here, and I'm just going to do an Alt F3 just to play that a bit closer. And what we should see is as the tool moves to position, you can see there is that stock collision. So uh, in this case, you can see quite clearly that the tool holder itself and the, the shank uh, are, are more than clear of the part. So we're, we're clearly in a non-collision state based on the part, uh, but we can certainly see that the uh, it's the stock material that's causing the problem. So the new toolpath uh, is basically uh, a, a regeneration or a change to the actual toolpath algorithm. So the settings would be identical. Um, so in this case I've got uh, the toolpath here. If I just double click, it's a Z-level roughing toolpath. If I go to the Z-level, we can see we've got holder collision clipping switched on. Um, there's nothing else to change. It's just a change in the, uh, the calculation algorithm. So what I'm going to do is just turn off the, uh, that remaining stock image and just go ahead and calculate that centerline toolpath. So the first thing you'll notice is straight away that toolpath doesn't cut nearly as deep uh, down through the part. Likewise, we can see uh, there's only small amounts of materials actually removed uh, on some of these lower segments. And that's because the tool is always trying to avoid collision and the stock is being dynamically calculated as we work our way down through the component. If I was to go ahead and just play that as a 3D simulation, uh, and again I'm going to switch my collision checking back on, 
play through that and what we'll see is there's no collisions likewise we can see the uh, the toolpath progressively moving further and further away from the part to avoid collisions well, we can also check that it is dynamically updating if I go back in I'm just going to change this so I'm going to say I want to remachine I'm going to do a step cut uh, in this case I'm just going to do a step cut of four millimeters and we'll set some uh, some parameters so I'm going to say detect material thicker than uh, 0.2 and expand area by two millimeters say OK and apply recalculate that toolpath and we get our part like so and likewise if I look at the slices because of the uh, the way this toolpath is calculated we'll notice that the larger slices for the major steps will be able to cut much closer to the part because it's aware of the stock condition